Hi, it's Tom here from Running Physio. Today, I want to talk to you about a question that we often get asked. Can patients run after a total hip or knee replacement? And actually, in uh, looking at the research in this, I found some really fascinating cases that I'd like to share with you uh, in this video. Also, we've got a link to our free webinar series if you'd like to learn more about managing running injuries like Achilles tendinopathy, lateral hip pain and lower back pain in athletes. So click on the link to find out more about that and access those free webinars. So when we talk about returning to sport after total hip or total knee replacement, uh, quite often patients will avoid returning to sport. Now, the research suggests that there are a number of reasons for this. Um, often it's because they're concerned about placing stress on their, their new joint replacement. And actually, in many cases, they're told not to return to sporting activities um, by their physio or sometimes by their surgeon. Um, so it's worth exploring this because if you think about it, especially in younger active patients to no longer do sport is going to have a really big impact on their life and if they can safely get back to it then it is something we should explore with them. Now we do need to be aware that there are some risks that are talked about with return to sport after a total hip or total knee replacement. Risks such as uh, periprosthetic fracture, dislocation or loosening of the components. So we do need to be aware of these risks and we need to plan a return to try and uh, minimise them. But actually fairly recent research has found that a return to activity doesn't seem to be associated with increased revision rates and we're seeing more and more examples in the literature and in patients that we're seeing in clinic that they can come back uh, to activity including sport after total hip or total knee replacements. Now, one study that's found this was uh, Jasim Matul in 2019. They looked at 64 patients who'd had either a total hip replacement or a total knee replacement, and all of the patients in their studies were in their study were able to return to sport, and that included a mixture of sport, things like uh, golf and swimming, but also, of course, running, uh, which uh, we know is very important to a lot of people. A lot of runners want to get back into running afterwards, and in all 64 of these cases, there were no complications. So there were no dislocations, no fractures, um, no revisions and no reports of instability. Um, so it does show that people can potentially get back into it. And we've got a nice comment here, Caroline, saying that she had a partial knee replacement and returned to running with no problem. It's four years on now. That's brilliant, Caroline. Tell us a bit more about that in the comments. I'd love to know what level of running you're up to, how you got back in, you know, how quickly you got back in, because it's great to see these uh, real examples of, of people coming back to the sport that they love. So we're seeing some evidence in the literature of people returning uh, to sport, including running. And one of the most amazing examples we have from this is from some French research uh, that I believe is pronounced uh, Raguet et al. Uh, from 2015. Now, they followed seven amazing patients following total hip replacements. And these patients, all seven of them were able to return to ultramarathon running after total hip replacements, including uh, one who went on to win ultramarathon races after having a total hip replacement. And one particular case I want to draw your attention to, he ran 500 kilometers in eight days, just two months following a total hip replacement which is incredible. Now, of course, this is not something that I'm going to be recommending to all runners um, and all people that have a total hip replacement. Um, this runner in particular has run over 60,000 kilometers since having uh, his hips replaced. Um, so he is an example to show that some people can take it to incredible levels. And actually in this study, they found no evidence of uh, excessive wear and tear in his, in his joint or, or loose loosening of the prosthetic. So there are some examples from this particular research that people can even get back to ultra marathon distance. Now, if you delve into that research, the seven cases uh, they had there, yes, all of them got back to ultra marathon distance. Five of them did very well, but two of them did experience some loosening of the prosthetic. Now, they mentioned in, in this particular study that one had had a number of falls, which they think may have caused it, and another had pain after running 2,500 kilometers in 40 days. So it may be that situation was just extreme overuse, you know, two two and a half thousand kilometers in 40 days, enough to, to affect the, uh, the prosthetic there. 
So we've got some examples of people not just returning to sport, returning to sport with high mileage and getting back to ultra marathon distances um, and seeing that actually in some cases, this doesn't seem to lead to negative effects on the prosthetic, specifically in these total hip cases that they're talking about. Now that study also uh, mentioned that on average they tend to return to running around about three months post total hip replacement in these particular cases. Most of these runners were, were lighter runners with a relatively low body mass index and they also recommended that if you're going to be doing these kind of distances that they had regular uh, radiographic checks because these runners are often used to running through pain so you might not have any early warning signs that there, there are some issues occurring with their joint replacement. Now, what we said then from these examples paints quite a rosy picture, doesn't it? That potentially some people can return to, to quite high levels, quite high volumes of sport, including running after total hip or total knee replacement. But I would certainly urge a degree of caution. Um, and I spoke to uh, orthopedic surgeon Howard Lux about this because I wanted to get to kind of a, a surgeon's opinion in it. Um, and, and he said, shared some really interesting information, particularly those with high BMI, uh, overweight patients are probably less likely to be successful returning to, to running after a total hip or total knee replacement. Um, and there are some surgical considerations around the prosthetic uh, that we should consider as well. So I'd highly recommend working closely with the surgeon in each individual case. Talk to them. If this runner is really passionate about get, getting back to running, talk to the surgeon, team up, um, li listen to their concerns if they have particular particular concerns about the patient and the surgery that they had and that should be one of our starting points here. So if you're trying to you know to get someone back into running if they want to get back into running uh, post total hip or to total knee first step let's talk to the surgeon team up with them and work closely with the patient as well. Second step, I think, is we need to be realistic about the time frames. Um, in this uh, amazing French research, they were getting back at around about three months. But again, talking to, to Howard Lux, an orthopedic surgeon, uh, he would say that realistically, we're looking at longer time frames, often six months plus. And I don't really think we should be rushing people back uh, following these, uh, these surgeries. I think we should aim to get them back gradually and get them back consistently rather than rush them back uh, and risk the complications. We do need to be aware of potential contraindications or cautions with returning to running and sport post total hip or total knee replacement, such as um, high body weight, so high BMI or obesity um, being a factor certainly to consider. And all of these runners that have returned successfully in this French research we're talking about were on the lighter side. Um, so um, it might be that actually we would look at weight management, bringing weight down to a, to a better level prior to return to running uh, uh, to help people and reduce the risk of complications. Uh, Caroline, who mentioned that she's returned after a, a partial knee, said it took it took about six months to a year. So it's good. Thank you, Caroline, for sharing the time scale there in the comments. Gives us an idea of roughly how long it takes to come back. So on this second point around, you know, cautions, body weight is one. Uh, second is there's any evidence of loosening um, of the prosthetic or instability following the knee replacement or hip replacement uh, that needs to be addressed and again discussed with the surgeon. Thirdly, if there's any evidence of effusion after impact or running, and you often be able to see this quite clearly in a total knee replacement, again, we should be cautious and be prepared to back off in these cases and communicate with our surgeon, if, uh, with the patient surgeon rather, if there are any concerns. So a few things to consider, we can work with the surgeon, be realistic about the time frame, be aware of the cautions, and then we want to try and make sure we restore strength, range of movement and control, get those rehab building blocks in place first so that the muscles around the hip or the knee joint are well able to help manage the load involved in running. And particularly post knee replacement, we want to try and restore full knee extension and probably at least a good 90 to 100 degrees of knee flexion. It's gonna be harder to return to running on a stiffer knee joint. So look to try and get the range back uh, prior to return uh, to running as well as things like control with single leg balance, single leg squat and impact management. I'd often introduce light impact first, like jogging on the spot, jumping, bringing those in, seeing what the response is like, and then planning a graded return to running. So 
Just to, to monitor then, uh, just to, to recap then, we've had five key steps for return to sport after, after total hip or total knee replacement so far. Step one, working closely with the patient and the surgeon. Step two, being realistic about the timeframes. Step three, being aware of precautions and contraindications. Step four, make sure the rehab is uh, enough to restore strength, range of movement and control. And step five is this graded return at appropriate stage post-injury. And the final step, step six, is to monitor them during that return process. Look out for any signs like increasing pain, like effusions, like any evidence of instability. And it may, may be that you need to monitor them with x-rays, um, you know, perhaps uh, once a year, once uh, once every couple of years to monitor, to make sure that there's no changes in the prosthetic. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, have you had patients that have come back successfully after a total hip replacement or a total knee replacement? Uh, what have you found that has worked for them? Uh, have you seen the opposite? Have you seen some negative consequences of people coming back into this? Um, do you think we need to start to perhaps challenge our own views, maybe the views even of surgeons out there who can still be very cautious about return to sport here? Um, it's quite a lot of good discussion points. So I'd really love to hear from you on this. And final little point from me, I think think about whether we can use some gait changes to help uh, to reduce some of the stress on the joint. In particular, with a total knee replacement, we might look at a slight increase in step rate uh, to reduce overstriding that increases the stress on the knee. And also with a total hip replacement, a slight increase in step rate may help to reduce the stress on the hip as well. Also, if you're finding a runner running with a lot of hip adduction, you would imagine this could place more stress on either a total hip or total knee replacement. So that might be something we would look at just changing with some subtle changes changes um, from our gait retraining. Okay, thanks very much everyone uh, for listening. I look forward to your questions and comments on this. Don't forget we've got access to that great free webinar series. I'll put the link in the title there. Uh, do check those out. Thanks again for listening. Bye for now.